Good day to you. Thanks for joining this session. In today's demonstration, we will be looking at RackMap, a cloud services delivery platform, helping you to automate and provision and bill a number of cloud services and also helping you to manage your backend business processes as well. What we'll be looking at primarily is the customer purchasing journey, right from the time he is landing in a marketplace to the time he is able to make the payment. And we will also be looking at a self-service portal where the customer is able to manage his services. And also we will be looking at the administration panel where the administrators are able to manage the services or, and the platform in general as well. I will show you a configuration or a purchasing behavior of Azure as well from an end customer standpoint. So uh, as this uh, uh, service provider has configured different uh, products to be on sale, uh, let's go and figure out how the customer is able to make a purchase of an Azure pro uh, offering from this customer, from this service provider. So in here, as you can see here, uh, this is a purely a paper use model of offering from this provider. So the customer says, I would like to go and provision an Azure subscription. So the customer now subscribes for it here. Again, the customer needs to enter his details if it's an existing customer or new customer, etc. And the important aspect here is in this model, this service provider, Zenet Live, has requested for the customer to make a deposit. Okay, so because in 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 a real paper use model, it's really a very difficult situation because you may not necessarily know the consumption as quickly as you would like to because it, yeah, the consumption report may come in two days later, one week later. In those kind of scenarios, the customer may end up with a huge bill. So the service provider here has the capability to, def to minimize the risk by defining this Azure fund value in his portal. So this provider has chosen to request the customer to make a deposit of 5,000 to be used for that kind of eventuality where the customer is running a huge bill, etc. So uh, the host name check is done, primarily required to be associated with an Azure subscription here. And uh, once this validation is done, this particular host name is available and that can be added now to this record as well here for the purchase. And now the customer is able to make that 5,000 rupees payment and then subsequently get his services provisioned. Okay, so this is a, a, a scenario where customer is able to make a purchase via the marketplace for an Azure pay-per-use model. Okay, so in this scenario, what happens is once the pay now button is clicked, the payment gateway processes the payment and Azure subscription gets provisioned for this customer. So in this scenario, the customer gets his Azure portal details, login details by email, and he can now go and create his virtual machines and instances and everything directly on the Azure portal. Okay, so here uh, the customer has complete control and flexibility to be able to manage a subscription directly in terms of services, what he would like to create on the Azure portal. He can do that himself. Okay? And what RackNet has the capability to do is to report on consumption on a regular basis of choice by you as a service provider. So you as a service provider can uh, provide the option 
to report on usage on a regular basis. So uh, let me come on to that uh, when I go into the customer control panel. So, so far, I guess uh, to summarize, uh, um, we looked at the purchasing behavior of a customer purchasing an Office 365 from the marketplace. We also looked at the purchasing behavior of a customer for an Azure paper use plan as well from here. Okay, so now let me go on to the managing the customer services here. So for which I'm going to take you to this panel here. So I'm now logged in to the customer self-service portal as Nitesh here. So I am now logged in here. I can see various tabs here. My services gives me details of the services which I have purchased. And similarly, my support gives me option to log support tickets as well. And then my billing gives me option for me to look at my invoices, etc. Okay. So in this example here, I've opened up an Azure subscription, which this customer has purchased and he purchased it uh, on this date. The usage data for this billing period from the 1st of July to the 4th of July is this. The customer has consumed this much of data management resource category uh, in terms of consumption. He has consumed this much network assets. The, basically, the unit of measurement is this, and the consumption is this, and the total selling price or the retail price to the customer is this value. Okay. So you as a service provider can set up cost price on the uh, or Microsoft sets the cost price for you which is at which rate you buy from them and RackNav gives you the flexibility or the capability to set margins and then that margin uh, applied cost price is what is applied to show the final purchase price for the customer. So in this scenario, you are selling at this rate to the customer. You might have bought it at, for example, 320 INR, for example, in this scenario. So uh, you have the flexibility to drive all of that. And one very interesting capability with RackNap is, uh, if you recall, we were actually showing an Azure security deposit of 5,000 rupees. So here, the consumption has already touched 4,794, which is effectively more than 90% of its consumption. So the beauty with which RackNap operates is RackNap actually helps to define alerts in the platform whereby uh, based on actual consumption you are able to see the uh, reports coming to you with alerts for example I'm now showing you what alerts you can define on the platform so this is a service provider view here there is a service alerts master so here you are able to go and configure the platform for alerts for Azure Cloud. And here you can see that when the usage has reached 70%, you can actually alert a group of people by sending different alert options. If you have that 80% or 90%, etc., you can add more granular levels as well, 95%, 97%, etc., as well. And you can also suspend that subscription when the consumption has crossed a higher limit. Okay, so you can do that also as well. Okay, so there is capability in the platform to do that uh, and this is completely controlled by the service provider. So you as a service provider have the, have the capability to control that. So this is how a real paper use model works whereby a customer is generated a bill for actual consumption on uh, uh, the appropriate billing cycle basis customer has purchased, they are all mentioned here. Uh, recommended service, as I mentioned, we can upsell and cross-sell uh, services to the customer by putting in appropriate attractive options in here. And current offers gives you the list of offers which are eligible for the customer, etc. Okay. 
my support section as the name says very obvious gives the list of tickets what the customer has logged on the platform for getting appropriate uh, services uh, uh, issues fixed okay so he can look at for example a ticket already which is uh, logged look at the status of them and he can also submit tickets from here as i mentioned uh, one very important aspect of uh, the uh, Rakna platform is the ability to offer a self-help feature whereby let's assume the customer has a particular uh, issue with a particular service he wants to contact the support team let's assume he has a problem with FTP then the system automatically give him gives him some options around asking him uh, what are all the issues typically he that our customers face and that resolution path for that is also mentioned here so let's assume he is having a problem with how uh, understanding how to add FTP in cPanel is selecting that question it tells you the details of how to add it as well if he's able to resolve this successfully with the instructions here then everything is good if he is not then he can log that ticket from here which means the ticket is logged with the appropriate service provider queue and then this is looked into by the service provider at their end. Okay, so he can do that from here. So he would, uh, we would expect the customer to submit all the relevant details okay, in here and then click on submit which means the ticket gets now logged in the appropriate uh, service providers queue okay so this is the particular uh, details of the ticket what we just logged and in the scenario that the customer is not happy with the responses received from the service provider support team you can escalate it whereby uh, it goes the escalation goes through through different escalation hierarchies depending on SLAs defined in this contract okay so you cannot directly escalate to the senior management until you go through the sequence in terms of the escalation matrix it's a very very important feature for service desk management okay. then looking at my billing the customer is able to look at all the billing information for his services from here in terms of number of invoices which have been generated uh, the quotations etc so this is a particular example of an invoice which is unpaid draw invoice sent to this customer for this particular service for this particular value here and the customer can also download the invoice as well in addition to that as I mentioned the customer can also look at the orders as well what have been placed what has been placed okay. again the appropriate status is highlighted in a different color just to ensure that uh, it stands out for the customer where the payment is due and this is an example of the order what we just placed earlier and receipts is basically money which is coming into the customer's account basically or into uh, into his RACNAP account where he has made the payment. So this in summary is everything what the customer is able to manage in his self-service portal. He's able to manage his services. He's able to log support tickets and get the issues resolved for his particular uh, uh, services. And he can look at all his billing and transaction details etc as well. Okay. So with that we're now moving on to the administration panel so in to summarize we have looked at the customer's purchasing behavior whereby he is purchasing a service from the marketplace and he is able to manage services as well in his self-service portal so now we move on to the administration panel where the service providers administrators are managing the platform here okay? so depending on the appropriate roles and privileges of the administrator the appropriate top options or menus appear here okay? uh, these are all powered by RACNAP depending on your appropriate contract arrangement with RACNAP these options will be displayed 
Okay. Uh, let me start off by showing some dashboard reports which are very fundamental for key uh, senior management people. For example, uh, you may want to look at uh, total revenue plan for the particular organization for a particular period. Okay. So in here, if you see here, this is the total revenue growth uh, for every month and that gives you all the details uh, for and analysis of the trend as well. So you can really understand the growth uh, in terms of the revenues as well. Okay. Then one other important uh, uh, element in terms of the dashboard reports is the order report which can help you to understand the order volume processing on a particular period so you can look at total orders for a particular month week and daily so this gives you a very good picture of what are your peak days on which you have got your orders etc and also when you are doing let's say a daily report you can also understand what peak period during the day you are getting orders etc as well this is a very good way of understanding uh, your order processing volumes on a during a particular period for cash flow situations, you can also look at the fresh unpaid invoices report, etc. I will not show you all the reports in here uh, because uh, the, the time may not be enough to show you every single detail in here. So there are tons of other reports from the support aspect of it. Then from a sales side, uh, let me show you one very important report which is relating to sales product-wise uh, information. So this is uh, total quantity of product wise sales for entire products within the portfolio here you can also do analysis on per product as well so as a product manager I would need to choose with the appropriate product and then the graph gets refreshed with the details for that particular product and one of the very important aspect of this is if when I click on this particular report it opens up the underlying data which makes up this report as well. Okay? So this way you can easily understand and export the data and do some pivot tables or an analytics based on that data. So it's a very uh, attractive way for anybody who is wanting to do deep analysis with that data. Okay? Then inventory is a very important module of RackNap whereby it helps you to understand what is your total inventory capacity in your organization, how much is used, how much is unused, how much is uh, the total, etc. So you can understand all of that in here. And then when you deep dive into each of these, it gives you the serial number later details as well in here. Okay. So uh, the in summary, this uh, dashboard report is a very powerful tool for executives to monitor all their information in a very easy to digest format from here. Okay. So now that we have looked at the dashboard report, let me start by showing you the customer CRM record here. So I'm just going to choose this test customer here. Okay, so this is the customer's CRM record where you can look at very low level details of whatever his information that is recorded in the platform, all his personal details, whatever the money he is owing, the service providers mentioned here, the unpaid invoices is mentioned here, the total number of services, whatever he has consumed is there, then you look at the total products under different categories is here, the total sales information and his tickets, his partner status, whether he is a partner or an end customer, who is his account manager, etc. So all of these details are clearly laid out here. Uh, well, in addition to that, all transaction emails, whatever has gone to the customer is also listed here. So everything is available for you to read in one place. So a very powerful way for an account manager or administrator to look at every single transaction of the customer in one single area uh, rather than going into different systems to look at billing, different systems to look at sales information, etc. You have all in one place. Okay. 
the invoices which have been generated for the customer they appear here the orders they appear here email communications set also also here every transaction whatever has been performed on this customer record is also logged here and there is SMS integration available with RackNap. All of that transaction is also appearing here in the SMS logs. Right? So uh, this is a very good way for any administrators to manage his record. Now uh, I'm going to start off with uh, something around opt-in leads. So I'm going to go to the marketplace where apart from when the customer is purchasing directly a product by adding it to his cart etc there are scenarios where the customer wants to understand a little bit more about the product or about the offering or about the sales aspect of it so there are these kind of opt-in forms where the customer's details are captured so that the customers can start engaging in a conversation with the back office teams with the back end sales teams so that information was logged here that actually uh, appears in the opt-in lead report here where it appears in this particular section where let me show you this example in this here the customer's IP address where he originated from his name contact details his account manager uh, and or the territory account manager where he originated from his contact details which page he originated from etc is also here so uh, the customer uh, service representative or the CRM person whoever is in contacting with this particular customer uh, can then contact this customer talk to them and understand what their requirements are and if they're happy that this is a good prospect then they can click on add lead here they can also delete this record if it's uh, if they assume it's junk data they can also put this particular opt-in lead on hold waiting to complete a conversation etc they can also synchronize this whereby it can, the system will search for any duplicates in the platform and highlight it because you don't want to have uh, unwanted unnecessary data lying in the platform and also there is a good uh, follow-up feature whereby it gives you details of uh, you, you can sort of a to-do list okay, where you can put all of that details in here and then that gets recorded against the customer record and then you can start tracking against it by filtering against the follow-up date range, etc. So uh, once the customer comes in as an opt-in lead, they are processed on the platform. They are added as a formal lead on the platform. Okay. So once the customer has been added as a lead here, they appear under the lead section here. After they appear here, you can start transacting with the customer, conversing with him about understanding his real requirements, whether there's a real potential with the customer for converting him into uh, or making uh, offering a purchase for him. And then once those details are possible uh, or unvalidated, then the customer is now converted from a lead to a potential. So once he becomes a potential, he appears under the potential listing here. Okay, and this is exactly where the customer record uh, is updated with the information about the actual sales which he is likely to make. Okay, all of that details are recorded in the potential section, and when the customers confirmed as being won over, then he becomes a proper customer on RackNap. So the full CRM cycle of having an opt-in lead on the system, converting to a lead, and then converting to a potential or an opportunity, and then making him an end customer. So all of this is available in one single system. So you don't need a separate CRM system to manage the customer's information in terms of journey and behavior, etc. Then looking at marketing, the system has tons of email uh, which can be generated, which can be customized and branded as per your needs and all of that appears in this listing here. 
then you have SMSs whereby all SMSs are for different trigger points they are shown here very clearly and promotions you can also run various promotions for your organization by adding them in here and then assigning them to particular plans particular billing periods etc you can do all of that in here so very very powerful way whereby you can understand uh, how to set up a promotions and apply them as well okay with that, we have concluded the CRM function of the platform. We looked at the dashboards. Uh, we also looked at the uh, marketing aspect of it as well. Now, quickly going into the billing aspect, as the name says, uh, all the orders, whatever have been uh, process on the platform or coming into the platform they appear under this section invoices they appear here and receipts they appear on the subsequent sections here okay, okay. then looking at the tickets ticketing is a very important aspect of RACNAP whereby whereby the system is able to give you a full list of all the tickets on the platform uh, which have coming uh, which are coming into the service desk for processing uh, the total tickets which have been logged the open tickets the reply tickets which are uh, which have been just been acted upon and the ones which are still uh, in in process they are all mentioned here so this can be sorted based on the date based on the department etc and the customers and the so the support desk agents are able to process the tickets based on the criticality and priority etc in this listing here okay uh, then a very important aspect of the platform is asset management okay so let me show you something about uh, how assets are managed in the platform uh, let's assume you are an msp managed services provider or a data center provider offering a number of data center solutions to your end customers you are very keen to manage your assets on the platform so you do all of that under the inventory section so you can add all of your hardware inventory including sata hard disks and ram and everything in here you can add all of your software details in here whereby your software licenses all of that can be added here your network inventory on IPv4 etc etc all of that is ordered in here once you have added all of that in here you are able to actually construct a logical server with that hardware what you have just added in here so for example, let's assume I would like to build a particular server with this particular uh, uh, configuration. Then I select the appropriate data center. I, separate, I select the product category which I want to build and then add all the details, whatever I need for logically building this particular server. So I select all of that. Once I have selected all of that, the logical server has been built here on the platform. Once it is built here on the platform logically, then you are giving it to the data center engineer to actually build it in the floor of the data center. So when he receives those instructions, he is physically building it. And after he has built it, he will now assign that particular server to a particular order which has been received on the platform. So when he does all of that, the inventory of these particular items, what has been chosen for this server build gets deducted automatically from the inventory. So which means in the platform, you have a logical reduction in terms of the quantity of uh, items and in physically also as the server has been constructed, this has also been uh, reflected as well. Okay. Let me show you something around data center asset management very quickly. So there are these, what I'm showing you is backend configuration whereby you can uh, understand how many racks are there, how many slots within the racks and chases are occupied, which are unoccupied, etc. So you can do check all of that on this particular section here. So you will need to select the appropriate options where uh, or the data center where your inventory is held. So as you can see here, this is a full listing of all the racks where data uh, our servers are present 
and it also highlights with different colors the different uh, occupancy rates for each of these. Let's assume I want to look at the data of this particular machine, of this particular rack here, then this shows 62% occupancy rate and this also gives you all the servers in the different slots as well. So with all of this, you and also you can also understand that configuration of the server as well and who is owning the server. So you can check all of that from here. A very powerful way of ensuring that you have a complete grip over all of your assets with different in different racks in your different data centers. So you can look at all of that from here. Then you can look at reports. There are many, many reports available on the platform, which you can look at to understand the, uh, the different and make some yeah, analysis on the end of every month on transactions which have happened, etc. So all of this is very much possible via these reports in here. And uh, very important, last but not the least, is the end configuration. This is basically the list of all the sections where different configurations can be done. So user management where different roles can be set up, users can be created, license keys, etc. can be done. API module configurations is there. Accounts, you can you can create partner slabs whereby when you're onboarding partners, you can uh, you can uh, define their discounts and commission slabs, etc. in here. Products is probably the most important of all of them, whereby this is exactly where plan and product information appears here, uh, including uh, packages where the real plans which are in the marketplace, they show up here. Um, and then if you want to add any bundles which you want to offer in the marketplace, that can also be highlighted here. We talked about assets, which is exactly where you look at the data center assets, etc. Uh, you can add OEMs if you are procuring hardware from different uh, providers, then you can put all of that in here. Uh, sales information, you can configure sales targets, uh, sales people, etc. You can do all of that in here. You can do billing, uh, you can set currency options, etc. in here. You can do payment gateways, etc. The billing section, what you're seeing here, shows you the different uh, configuration options which should be set for billing. For example, you can set multiple currency options. You can configure your payment gateways here, your order settings, invoice settings, all of that can be configured here. Then the support uh, aspect around your different ticket categories, ticket titles, all of that, you can configure them in here and marketing uh, name obvious that you can configure promotion uh, setups, etc. in here. So with this, we have covered every aspect of RackNap functionality all around purchasing behavior of the customer, using capabilities of RackNap's automatic ordering and provisioning modules and billing as well. We also looked at the self-service portal where the customer is able to manage his services and also the administration panel where the customer is able to, uh, customers administrators are able to manage and configure the platform as per their needs. Okay. So with that we have come to the end of this demonstration. Um, thank you very much for your time uh, and if you have any questions on any of the items what you saw in the demo please feel free to write to us at touch at rackanap.com. I repeat touch at rackanap.com. Thank you very much and have a good day.